Okay, so we're going to take the piece of paper that we just drew and we need to get this into the computer so we can reference it and do some outline tracing in uh, Cut2D. So all I'm going to do here is lay it face down on my HP Office Jet. It's just a standard office scanner. And I'm going to go over to my MacBook and I'm going to scan it in and then I'll show you what to do in Cut2D. So now I'm in Cut2D and I'm using uh, Cut2D Pro, but you could be using Cut2D Desktop or VCarve Desktop or Pro. It's not going to matter. The, the process is exactly the same. Nothing I'm going to show you here is outside the scope of the desktop version of Cut2D or VCarve. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new file. Now, remember I told you you needed to remember the dimensions that you scanned that image at with your scanning program. In my case, I scanned it 8.5 by 11. If you use something other than that, you need to make sure you put these dimensions in here exactly as you did on your scanning program. If you don't, when you go and import the scan, it's going to scale to whatever size your work area is, and then the speaker dimensions will not be accurate. So we're going to scan it, leave this at 8.5 by 11. And I'm going to be using a piece of uh, eighth inch acrylic to make this uh, template and uh, or this adapter ring. And so what I'm going to do is uh, set this to eighth inch. I'm going to set my Z0 to the top of the work material. So I'm going to basically touch my tool off on the top of the acrylic when I have it mounted in my Stepcraft machine. And I'm going to set my XY start position and the lower left corner as indicated by this red square. My alternative is I could put it in the center. So if I were to put a piece of material down on the step craft, I could in fact uh, have it work off of the center point instead. But I'm gonna use the, the lower left here uh, for this particular job. And I'm gonna be working in inches. I click okay. Now I'm gonna come up here to import bitmap for tracing. And I am going to go to my desktop and I'm gonna import speaker template. So this is the scan as it came right off my scanner and because the uh, scan was at 300 dpi and I opened my work area to 8.5 by 11, this scan is as a true size. This is exactly what the size is uh, for that particular uh, scan so it's accurate to the speaker. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in here a little bit. And there is an auto trace feature for bitmap imaging, but that doesn't work very good with pen drawings. It, it would it would actually see things like you see where my pen slipped off right here, or this little loop that my pen did. It it would see that, and it would follow it. And there would be a lot of note editing later after the scan conversion was done. Additionally, you can see how my pen almost makes like two hard lines with a thin line when it's scanned in at real high resolution. So you would end up with two parallel uh, paths that the auto trace feature would use there. So what we're going to do is we are going to use, uh, we're going to draw some lines here. So we're going to use the draw line. These two tools are the, are the primary ones. Draw a line slash polyline and draw an arc. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to zoom in and we're going to get now you got to forgive me here a little bit because I'm using a Mac mouse and the zoom on the Mac mouse is uh, tends to be a little little sensitive. So it zooms in and out a lot quicker than I would like it to. OK, so we're going to start with the arc. Now what we're going to do is we're going to click draw an arc and we're going to go through three points. And what we want to do is we want to see where the, the straight line kind of ends and it starts to curve and we want to click a point there and we want to do the same thing on this side where does it go from a curve to a straight point I'm going to click again there now you'll see I'm not I'm not holding the mouse now I'm just dragging the mouse and this this curve or this arc is made but what I want to do is I, I want to get I just want to move to the center and I, I want to put my mouse pointer to the center of the outside most of the arc and you'll see how it kind of follows the shape naturally and then I'll click OK and you'll see a purple uh, dashed line there so that's where I'm starting with this and that that's my first arc and again it's you're you gotta remember you're zooming in really far here on a 300 dpi drawing so when you actually go to cut this out that the this dimension here this gray area is the thickness of the pen so we're talking about a very very small line and, and I wouldn't really stress 
too much over, you know, trying to get the accuracy exactly to the outside of the gray line. Uh, it's not that important for what we're doing here. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to click close and we're going to go to draw line now. And when you hover your mouse over the end of the arc, you'll see that the, the plus sign pointer turns into kind of a, looks like a, a bullseye kind of target thing. When you do that, that means it's locked on to the end point of the previous uh, path. So we're going to click OK there. And we're just going to click down and we're going to drag it. Now, at this point, uh, I'm going to use the, the zoom tools and I want to get out uh, roughly to here. Now, you can see from here to here is a slight arc. So what we can do, we have a couple options. We can do that arc in straight lines, kind of like this. And because as I told you, um, it really is not that critical when it comes to that. So that's one way to do it. And I'll show you on the next one how to do it uh, a little bit differently. Now, the, the, this will snap to the gray on the image. So it, it will do its best to kind of assist you in getting things close. So we're going to draw the line here to, again, just about where the arc ends. And we are going to hit the escape key and that's going to end that tool. Now I'm going to come back over here again and I'm going to grab the arc again. Wait till it turns into a bullseye. I'm going to go to the other side of this rounded corner and I'm going to stretch it out and you'll see it's very, very easy to do. And it's naturally going to follow that arc because it recognizes the gray. And I'm going to go back here to draw a line again. And I'm just going to repeat this process as I go around the uh, perimeter of this. Now, on this particular one, I'm going to use an arc instead of drawing it with straight lines. So I'm going to click to here and hit escape. And that's going to stop my, my straight line. I'm going to go to the arc tool. And I'm going to wait for the bullseye. I'm going to come over here to the other side. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to give it kind of a slight arc like that. So you can do each you could do it each way whichever way makes you know is easier for you if you want to draw straight lines that's fine if you want to use the arc tool for uh, all the radiuses you can and so i'm just going to keep doing this process and go all the way around until i've completely uh, traced in all of the perimeters so we'll be back in one second and i'll show you what it looks like when it's all traced out. Okay, so now I have the uh, border uh, made. I have the path all the way around. And you can see what I drew by just going to the layer button here and clicking on the uh, light bulb. That's going to make the bitmap go away. And what you're left with is the outline that I drew. So <clears throat> the problem with this outline is that if you click on the edges of it, you'll notice that uh, as I drew it, like I drew the corners and I drew the straight lines and over here I drew, you know, I drew straight lines and I did an arc. None of them are connected. So the idea is we're going to want to have everything connected here uh, so that when I click on the border, everything highlights at the same time. To do that, it's very, very easy. All you got to do is uh, hold your mouse button down and draw uh, a box around everything you'll see everything is highlighted and turned purple from there we're going to go over here to this button which is the join open vectors button and we're going to click we can leave the the tolerance to pretty much anything I have it set to one inch right now and it's telling me I have 12 vectors that are open that's the 12 lines that I drew and then I'm going to click join and click close so now when I click anywhere on this perimeter it highlights the whole thing so that's one whole uh, perimeter that that's all set now that's one one solid vector okay so now we're gonna turn the uh, scanned image back on by clicking this light bulb on the bitmap layer again and we'll click close and get out of there so now I can see the rest of the stuff that we have to draw so what we need to do is is we need to do the circles uh, the holes here first uh, that'll be the next step now if you remember we said they were gonna be 0.2 inches in diameter so we're gonna go over here and click draw circle and for we're going to make sure we've highlighted diameter instead of radius and we are going to change this number to 0.2 and we're going to click create and it's going to put a circle right there on the screen so we go ahead and click close 
and we're going to click the move scale rotate icon and we're going to select that and we're going to move it over so that it's close to the circle uh, that was in the drawing that we scanned. Now we're going to go ahead and copy this. Now on a Mac it's command C and then to paste is command V. You could also right click and I can do a copy here and then right click again and do a paste and it's going to paste another one right in its spot. I'm going to take that I'm going to move it over to the second hole and I'm going to copy paste again and move it up here. Doesn't matter exactly where you're going to where you're uh, located because we're going to go ahead and zoom in and make that more accurate in a minute. We're going to do one more circle and we're going to this time it's going to go right in the center where that uh, crosshairs was. So now we're going to zoom in and now we can accurately position these these circles. So what I'm going to do is start with the center. I want it to be as close to the center point as possible. That's pretty good. Like I said, it's not we're we're not actually you could see the the center dot right here, the square. You you want to put that kind of in the middle of the crossroads. So that that looks good. I'm happy with that. Now we're going to go up and take a look at the uh, top pole and we're pretty close. So what we're going to do is uh, again, we're using the the move scale rotate uh, tool at this time. So we're going to go ahead and move this so that it looks like it's close to center and we're going to go over to the other side. That one's way off. We're going to move that so that it's close to center and then we're going to go down to the bottom and do the same thing here and that looks pretty good you can also use your arrow keys to move uh, it moves in smaller steps and then we're going to do this one and that's it so there's the the four holes plus the center hole so the essentially right now the uh, original speaker is all drawn the uh, vectors are all joined together and we have the four holes for our mounting location so that's that's all done now so we're going to go on now we're going to do the second speaker and we're going to do the same thing we're going to trace an outline on that and then put those holes in and then we're going to come back and I'm going to show you how to join them all together and our final piece is going to be this right here with a hole in the center of it but it's also going to have the mounting holes already prepared for the uh, the speaker that we're going to install so tracing out the next speaker is going to be very similar to the first one in fact I found this one to be a lot easier uh, we're going to start by drawing a straight line from here to about here which is where the curve starts and then we're gonna hit the escape key and we're gonna draw another straight line we're actually gonna go around and we're gonna do all the straight lines first and that should it'll take a few seconds to do that and uh, what we're gonna do is go back after and we're gonna connect all of the straight lines with arcs So the straight lines are all done. Now we're going to go back and we're going to grab the arc tool. And remember what I said that when you move it over the end of a line and it turns into like a bullseye, that means it's going to connect to the previous vector. So we're going to click on that and drag it over until we connect to this vector. And then we're just going to simply move the end out until we get that shape. And we're going to move over here. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to click that end and we're going to move. I love the arc tool especially on this speaker design it makes it very very simple to uh, draw these curves uh, and get them you know relatively close to what they what they need to be now again this isn't a scale CAD representation but it's gonna be pretty close for anything we're gonna need for this particular job so now we're gonna grab this endpoint and go over to this endpoint and we're gonna come up and that's gonna give us the outside shape of the speaker and you'll notice too that it has the ability to snap so it's like the software can kind of sense a little bit that there's a gray line there and, and you'll you'll feel that it snaps to the bitmap a little bit uh,
which you know is is helpful. So there you go. That's it. The whole speaker is outlined. It it took maybe a minute and a half, two minutes total. A little bit of patience just to draw the straight lines. We're gonna click close here again. We're gonna hold down the mouse button and we're gonna draw a square all the way around. We have to do the same thing. We have to join the open vectors. So now when I select this, the entire outline is selected all at once. Now <clears throat> the slots are a little different here because they're elongated. So what we're going to do is we're going to make one and then we're going to come back and we're going to modify it uh, a little bit. Now the problem that we have is that remember I drew inside the slot with the pen so we really can't use this shape as the accurate size for that but we do know because we took measurements uh, that we had um, 0.2 wide by 0.33 long so what I'm gonna do here is draw a rectangle and it could be anywhere it doesn't really matter and I'm gonna do the width is 0.2 and 0.33 for the height and I'm gonna click create so now I've got this rectangle on the screen I don't know why it puts it there but we're gonna move that to the center and that more accurately represents the shape that that this is now there is a radius at the top and we could put the radius in if we want to uh, it's it's not imperative I think this square would be more than fine but just because I want to be a a little bit of a perfectionist here let's try that so we're gonna click on the arc tool we're gonna to click this corner and this corner and we're gonna make a little bit of a radius here and we're gonna do the same thing this corner and this corner and a little bit of a radius there so now we have an elongated shape that's very similar to what's on the speaker so we're gonna click close we're gonna highlight that whole thing we're going to click this button here, which is Weld Selected Vectors. And what's going to happen when we click that, it's going to get rid of these horizontal lines, and you're just going to have this, this final shape like that. Now, we need four of those, and we also need it to be in the direction that it was originally um, drawn here on, on the page, which essentially this line, these cross lines, represent a 45-degree angle. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on the Move Scale Rotate, and when you click on the outside blue square, a little rotation thing comes. That's going to allow you to pivot the uh, rotate this object along the center point. If you hold the shift key down, it's going to do it in increments. And lo and behold, one of the increments is 45 degrees. So it's the third step over. So by holding it down and moving it three steps, one, two, three, we've got a 45 degree uh mark there so we can now take that and move it up over here and you'll notice that it is exactly the same angle as the line in the original speaker now we need to make a copy of that because we need it for the lower left corner so we're gonna control C and then V and we're gonna put this one down here and then we're gonna make another copy except this time we're gonna hold the rotate tab and we're gonna move it 90 degrees so we want a 45 degree angle but the other side the other way and we are going to move this one up here and then we're gonna make a copy of that and move it down here now just like we did with the other one we'll zoom in and we're gonna do our best to center the slot over the drawing that I made and that's gonna get us in the right vicinity so that the fasteners all line up on this uh, adapter plate after so we're going to do that and then we'll finish up with this one which looks like it was already pretty good from where it was Maybe we'll move it just a hair okay the last thing we need to do here is we need to get to the center of this speaker and we need to do another whole eighth inch so we're gonna do or I'm sorry a point two a point two inch uh, diameter hole and there it is and we're gonna go ahead and oops wrong one we're gonna move that to the center 
mark. We'll zoom in so that we can get a better idea. And again, we want to put that center square roughly in the intersection of these two lines. And there you have it. Okay, so what we're going to do now is, is right now we've got all of these objects are separate. So the slots and the circle in the middle, they're all individual. And we want to lock them all together. So what we're going to do is we are going to draw a square around the whole thing. Everything should highlight in purple. And we are going to go over here to this button, which is Group Selected Objects. And we're going to do the same exact thing for the upper speaker. And we're going to group those. And what that's going to do is it's going to allow us to move everything now as, as a whole instead of moving it as individually. So now what I want to do is I want to take this lower speaker and I am going to place it over the other speaker just like that. And I want to line up the circles in the middle as best I can. And again, it's, it's not super rocket science here we just want to get it close uh, there we go so that looks good so now I know that's basically telling me that this inner uh, speaker is centered now on the outer one and that's that's what I want right here so the next thing we need to do is we need to draw a circle in the middle here which is going to be the cutout because we're not going to cut this outside line. That's more in there just for reference right now. But we are going to cut out the circle, the four inch circle that we defined before. So we're going to go over here to circle and we are going to do a four inch diameter and click create. And here's our circle. So <clears throat> what we're going to do, <clears throat> what we're going to do is we're going to select a circle and we're going to select this object. And we're going to go over here to align and we're going to align to selection centered. So we're just going to click this center one. And what it did was it automatically centered the new circle we just drew to the outline of the speaker. And we can actually do it one more time here and hold the shift key and select the outer speaker and do align to center. And everything's going to shift just a tiny bit and it's going to center the circle within and the speaker layout within the uh, outer speaker design with everything centered now you can see I'm looking closely here and, and I, I noticed that the slot here and this circle they should be in line because we we originally that was the point of drawing the cross between the circles so I think when I laid the bigger speaker on the piece of paper it wasn't exactly square which is is a little difficult to do I guess because it's got angled sides so I, I did the best I could but I really want to make sure in the final piece that we cut out that the circles here in the corners are in line with the uh, circles or the cutouts for that speaker so that's an easy fix all we're gonna do is we're gonna select the outer speaker and we're gonna select the move uh, scale rotate selection tool and we'll grab the outer one. This time we're not going to hold the shift key because we want to freehand rotate it. And we're just going to turn it a little bit. And we'll zoom in and see how that looks. I told you the uh, sensitivity on this is pretty sensitive on my Mac mouse. But uh, okay, so now I can see that circle is pretty much in line uh, with that. It looks good. And that's exactly what I want. So now what we're going to do is we're going to turn off the bitmap layer. So all we're looking at is what I drew here, and we're no longer looking at the, uh, the, the scan drawing. And we're going to ungroup everything at this point. So because what I need to do is we're going to create the tool paths next, and we're going to tell the CNC uh, what to cut out and where and how. And right now, because the two speakers are grouped, I can't select an outside edge. It's just selecting everything. So we're going to ungroup that layer, which is this button here. And then we're going to ungroup this speaker. All right. So we're good. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to open up the tool pass tab. And we're going to pin it so it stays. So now I have the drawing on one side, tool pass on the other. 
And I've got this, because this was an eight and a half by 11 work area, I don't necessarily want to have this uh, whole thing up here. I'd rather start a, a, a point in the lower left corner so that I'm not wasting all of this material. I can simply mount my plastic on the uh, machine and I can you reference off of this lower corner. So what I'm gonna do is just highlight everything, go to the move tool, and I'm gonna move it all as one unit. And I'm just gonna bring it down here uh, to the left side and the bottom. I'm gonna leave a little bit of a gap around the edge, but that's where I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it at this point. So when you're C and C cutting something, you're gonna start always with the center. So the first thing that we wanna do here is we wanna select this circle that we made that's where the speaker is going to go so that's the first thing we want to cut out so what we're going to do is we're going to go over here to toolpath operations we're going to click on profile toolpath we're going to use an eighth inch end mill for this job and our cut depth is going to be we want to go clear through so i'm using eighth inch acrylic we're going to go 1.2 i'm sorry 0.125 deep now typically you would go maybe point uh, 127 or 128 to cut into a spoil board but in this case when I measured it it's just a hair under uh, 0.125 so I th it's good it should cut all the way through without a problem from the top so we'll leave it you know what actually just to make on the safe side let's do 0.127 so that's gonna give me a little error uh, room for error there now we're gonna select the eighth inch end mill in this case we are using an eighth inch end mill that's set for a pass depth of a sixteenth of an inch, which is typically the rule of thumb. Your pass depth should be half of the diameter for certain materials. Acrylic, it, you could do the full diameter, but just for the sake of this video, we're going to do half. Uh, the step over is not going to matter because we're not pocketing anything. Uh, we're going to set the spindle speed at 15,000 RPM. Our feed rate is 25 millimeters per second, which is half of the speed of the Stepcraft machine. We can always vary the speed in UCC and C while the job is running. And our plunge rate is set to 10. And that's the speed at which the bit goes down into the material. So I click OK. It's telling me I'm going to cut through in two passes, which is fine. What I want to do here, though, is I want to cut because that circle is four inches and I want it to be exactly four inches. So I want to cut inside the line. And uh, that way, when it's done, I'll have a four inch circle. Uh, climber conventional. Uh, I like to use conventional when I'm uh, doing acrylic. So we'll leave it on a conventional. It's basically a counterclockwise rotation of the or movement of the tool. Uh, we're not gonna use tabs on this. Uh, the piece is gonna be taped down, so I'm not worried about the circle breaking free. And we'll click calculate. It's gonna warn me that our material is set to 0.125, but we're gonna go 0.127, so it wants to make sure that I have a spoil board or something so I don't cut into the table. Click OK. Now, this we could set this to anything we want. Right now, I, I had it set to, let's just do blue plastic. Um, I had it set to MDF because that was the last job I was doing. We could click Preview Toolpath, and it's going to show that we cut the circle. So now we're going to go back, and the next thing we want to do is cut out these slots. So we're going to select the first one, hold the Shift key, and we're going to go ahead and select all four of them. I'm going to click close here. We're going to go, uh, in this case, profile toolpath again. Same tool, same depth. Everything's the same. This time we want to go inside as well, inside the line. And we want to click calculate. It's going to give us the same warning. And we're going to go ahead and preview all toolpaths. So now we've got the slots uh, right there as we, as we drew them. So now we're going to go back here, and this time we need to do the outer mounting holes, which is what is going to fasten this plate back to the car. So these holes, you're going to use a nut and a, and a screw to mount the speaker to this, this adapter, and then these holes are going to mount right back into the original opening on the car. So we're going to select the first one, hold the shift key while we select the other three. We're going to go back here and go to the profile toolpath again. All the same settings. We're not going to touch anything. Everything's going to stay the same inside 
the lines. We're going to click calculate. Same warning. Now we're going to do profile. So there's our four holes. Now the last step we have to do here is just to cut the piece out. We got to cut the, the whole template out. So what we're going to do is select the outside line. We're going to go back and we are going to do profile toolpath. Same depth setting. This time we're going to cut outside the line because we want to make sure that this is the finished piece that we have. So we're going to click outside and what I'm going to do here is we're going to add two tabs to this just to make sure that the piece doesn't flop out even though we're going to tape it down just in case you're doing a different fixture method I want to show you how to do tabs so we're going to click add tabs we are going to use uh, quarter inch tabs that are uh, we don't want to do a sixteenth of an inch we want to go smaller than that uh, so we're going to go three uh, thirty thousandths and we're going to click edit tabs now a little pointer is going to come up and it's going to let me select where I want the tabs. Now it's best to put tabs on flat or straight line surfaces. So we're going to put one tab there. We're going to put one on the opposite side. And that should be enough to hold that piece in place. So we'll click close. And we're going to go down here and click calculate. Same warning. This time we're going to hit reset preview. And then we're going to do preview all tool pass. And you can see here's the, the entire... Uh, piece that we're working on if I double click the circle in the middle it disappears now I can rotate this and I could take a look at it in a 3d perspective I can look at the back side make sure all the holes went through and if I zoom in you'll see the tabs that are, are being left behind right there so just a really thin tab and that keeps the piece connected to the material so it doesn't move around while uh, while it's being cut and that's pretty much it. There's the, the finished piece. What we'll do is we'll take this off of the acrylic later and we'll use a, a razor knife or a Dremel tool to cut off wheel and we'll just cut off the tabs. And now we'll have a perfect speak adapter, uh, speaker adapter to use to mount that new JL 4-inch mid-range speaker in the original factory opening.